Good morning guys, welcome back to another video of Starch Solution Eating. I want to show you every single thing I eat today, eating low calorie density, high volume weight loss foods that obviously are fantastic for your health. Excuse me, I'm out of breath. I dropped the kids off at school <clears throat> and then I realised that it was jeans day. So I legged it back, grabbed some jeans for Abe and just literally sprinted to and from the school and it was an amazing workout. <sighs> Remember what I was saying about turning negative things into a positive thing. So I could have gone, oh no, I forgot the jeans. But instead I was like, I'm gonna use this opportunity to get some movement into my life. So I literally ran as fast as I could. I'm absolutely knackered and I'm feeling the burn, which is incredible because I'm only five minutes later back to the house than I usually am. And I've done loads of running, so absolutely brilliant. <laughs> anyway, I'm feeling thrilled. Um, <clears throat> this morning I have got a ton of Indian dishes that I want to be making. For those of you who are new, I'm writing a vegan Indian weight loss cookbook at the moment, um, which has been so delicious so far. And I've got a ton of recipes I'm wanting to create today whilst the kids are at school slash nursery. Um, so I'm gonna dive into that. But this morning I was not very, well, I was very naughty is what I was gonna say. And then I realized actually I was just prioritizing something different, which is my sleep. So I, you guys know I like to wake up at about 5.30 and get my workout in. I didn't do that today because I was knackered and it was a bit of a crazy night. I was like, no, I need some more sleep. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into the front room and I'm gonna do a crazy advanced rebounding session um, <clears throat> with, my, with the new rebounder that I borrowed from my aunt, which is the best thing ever. Honestly, something as small as, like you'd think if I have a rebounder, I should be able to get on the rebounder and do rebounding, which obviously I could. But the bit that was putting me off was the fact that it was so squeaky, it was waking everybody up when I did it early. And also it's just not fun to bounce when you hear loads of squeakiness. <clears throat> like if I had the TV on watching a rebounding session, I could barely hear it because my rebounder was so squeaky. But having just done that little change to getting a rebounder that is not squeaky is going to mean that I get on that rebounder so much more. So we are just products of our environment and things that we set up for ourselves. I'm gonna be doing so much more rebounding now than I ever did before, because of the new rebounder. Anyway, I'm very excited about it. I'll show you a few little bits that I end up doing. Um, I'm doing somebody, Michelle something, Michelle B something something. I don't really remember her full name, but she's great. She does like super amazing rebounding hit kind of sessions. And I'm loving those at the moment. So I'm gonna go and do like a half an hour one of those before we jump into some cooking. Yes, I could prioritize my work, but I also really want to prioritize my rebounding. You guys know that I, I'm trying to work on my muscle building and fitness in general, and therefore that is a priority for me. I'm gonna squeeze it in no matter what my day looks like. So let's do this guys, let's do this and then we'll crack into some food. Whew. I feel like I've already done a bit of a warm up, which is beautiful. So guys, last night, you guys know I didn't have a ton of veggies when I was starting to do my nighttime snacking, like my dinner time snacking, and I had, um, I ended up having a couple of sweet potatoes before we had the mung bean stew, and actually, I was pretty full by the end of that. I should have obviously preloaded with some veggies, but we literally had none, um, and therefore I went sweet potato. But yeah, I'm, I'm still feeling a little bit full this morning, so I'm probably not going to eat breakfast for quite a while. But the thing that I've realised is... <clears throat> If I do do that, and I have a bit more food than I actually, than I know my body needs in the evening, instead of <clears throat> what I could actually do is wake up in the morning and if I get a little bit of movement in, that just kind of like reshuffles everything <clears throat> in my system. And it just makes me feel so much lighter. So if you guys have that same feeling, wake up and do a little bit of movement. And honestly, it really, really helps just to like make you feel a little bit more fresh when you would otherwise be feeling a bit more sluggish. Anyway, just a little tip that I found out recently. Yes. So I also just wanted to share that no matter how much weight you have lost and how lean you are looking, um, if you kind of eat a little bit too much the night before, you will have food in your tummy and that's all right. I've obviously lost 60 pounds and I am feeling a lot stronger because I'm working on my health and fitness and all that kind of stuff, but I don't look perfect. If you have the idea that you're wanting to look perfect and that losing weight is going to make you look perfect, well, firstly, what the heck is perfect anyway? But sometimes I know that you feel like, uh, well, I used to feel like this anyway. I used to see people online who looked perfect all the time because that's obviously what they portray. 
which is fair enough. They're trying to inspire people. And that's all right. But then you like sometimes I would wake up and I'd be like, oh, my gosh, look, at, look at that. I am not one of those people. I have done something wrong. I'm a terrible person. And it's like, no, that's just being a person and having food in your stomach. And that's all right. So anyway, if you wake up or at night or whatever, if you feel like you've got a little something, something like that's OK. That doesn't change anything. You are still incredible because you are working on your health and fitness goals. And you're never going to look perfect. There is no such thing. Anyway, I just thought, I, you guys know I like to try and keep it real. Um, so I just thought I'd mention that. Sometimes I wake up like that. So I actually want to do a little bit of legs. So I'm going to do this leg workout right here. Let's check it out. It's a super Hi, short one. Hi, I'm Joko. And open. Four. Four. Three, two, four. Keep going. Never double. It's always a single step. Push. Keep going. Push. Oh man, that was killer. Absolute killer. Loved it. Seven minutes of legs. Absolutely beautiful. Sometimes short can be really good. Um, anyway, I'm now just going to continue with an inner thigh workout on the rebounder. 20 minutes. Let's do it. Our inner, our inner thighs and lower abs are this muscles. 15 seconds. Oh my God, I have just done the most intense 30 minute leg workout ever by San Fan Fitness. If I remember, which I know I don't all the time, I'll try and leave a link down below for those of you rebounders out there who want to murder your legs. My legs are jelly. I can barely walk myself to the kitchen, but it was fantastic. And every time it burnt and felt like really intense and really crazy, I, was, I would say to myself, this is what moves you forward. If you don't feel the burn, if you don't feel slightly uncomfortable, you're not moving forward. So I was like, yes, Amy, I'm moving forwards. Anyway, try and tell yourself that when you're kind of in that burn zone. Anyway, it's quarter past 10. Let's make some food. Okay, so the first thing I'm doing is I'm removing my kids' leftover chocolate porridge from breakfast because I don't want to be eating it. And if it's in front of me, I am going to eat it. So I'm going to put it away, put it in the fridge. And then what I'm going to do, hold on, let me show you my face. What I'm going to do is, I know I'm not actually hungry yet, but I'm going to probably get hungry in the next hour or so. So what I'm going to do is now that I have fruits and veggies, I'm going to make myself a massive fresh fruit veggie medley platter, put it on the side next to me when I'm cooking. And then if I get hungry whilst I'm making all my Indian stuff, then I'm going to start by eating that. And then when I have finished that, then I'll move on to some other stuff. So anyway, that's kind of my thought process as to how I can get some amazing low calorie density stuff into me in the first place, setting up my environment for success. Okay, you may think I'm overdoing it, but I actually just got so excited by having fresh stuff in the house again. And actually this is so, what a beautiful way to start the day. Now, you can't tell me if somebody put that in front of you, you wouldn't want to eat it. It's rainbowy. We are attracted to rainbowy fruity goodness. So the first thing we're gonna be making is a millet halva. Um, this is kind of like a rice pudding, but made of millet and Indian style. One thing that adds to the incredible flavour, as I've shown you guys over the last couple of weeks, is roasting things before you actually start to cook it. So I'm going to go in with one cup of millet and I'm going to roast it, dry fry it um, for a couple of minutes just until it's got a really nice aroma and then we're going to add our liquid in. So let's dry fry this real quick. Okay, for the milk portion, I'm going to add in the equivalent of two medjool dates. I've got these really super tiny ones, so I'm just going in with four of those um, and I'm also going to go in with a nice semi-ripe-ish banana. I've got some coconut milk here because I thought that would be the best, most fitting one. So I'm going in with one cup of coconut milk and one cup of water. There we go. Right, we're just going to blitz this together. This is going to be our liquid. Okay, so I don't know if you can see, but it's starting to smell really aromatic. And it's kind of gone a little bit more of a golden brown colour. Okay, now we're going to add in our milk. Woo! Now I'm just going to stick the lid on and let this sit for a little while until the millet is fully cooked. I'm just in the process of making a little um, carrot salad. So I've got one cup of carrot chopped up, a quarter cup of coriander, some coconut, some ginger, and then I'm dry frying. This is going to give it all the amazing flavour. I'm dry frying some mustard seeds, some hing and a few little curry leaves. Obviously, traditionally, you do this in oil. I'm just dry frying it here and I'm going to add that in. And that is going to be a delicious Indian carrot salad. So I'll show you the finished product. I am filming the recipe over for Instagram. So if you want to see the full thing, feel free to go and check it out over there. Okay, this is the millet once it has been cooked down with all of that milk and goodness. Um, so now I'm just going to add in some cardamom and some nutmeg for that lovely flavour. 
Oh no, I'm nearly out of nutmeg, so this will hopefully give me enough. There we go. And like half a teaspoon of cardamom powder. It's so funny, habits are so, so important. And I was just thinking about how the other day we um, didn't know what to make for dinner. I wasn't making anything specifically for the book, but we happened to make Indian just because we're used to making Indian now and I just make Indian on autopilot. So whatever it is, you get into that habit of making, you just won't even think about it anymore. You'll just start making it. I'll probably just be eating Indian for the next few weeks just because that's what I'm used to making now. And also those are the kind of flavors that I'm, thinking about and falling in love with as well so it's like it's like anything the more you eat veggies the more you fall in love with veggies same with fruits and everything really so if you want to fall in love with um fruits and veggies you just have to start eating more fruits and veggies there's no other way to say it to be honest oh yeah and this is my final carrot salad by the way um I've sprinkled a couple of little toasted peanuts on there just for like visual purposes really but it's got so much flavor it's really really yummy um if I remember, I'll try and leave the recipe for you down below. But yeah, so, so good. I'm going to have this along with my fruity platter, which I've already started eating, um, as my breakfast preload. Mm -mm -mm. If you're getting bored of veggies, you just need to figure out the right spices and herbs and all that kind of stuff to add to make them taste amazing. Okay, this is the Millet Halva final product. It is a very, very delicious. Mmm. Mm. there's no way I need to eat this entire bowl so I'm going to portion myself off some and I might have it with like a side of frozen blueberries or something unconventional um, just because I fancy that kind of cold warm kind of mix but this is very very delicious and if you want to uh, you can add some toasted uh, nuts and raisins on the top I did that just for visual effect obviously but actually a nice little toasted cashew is quite tasty if you don't feel like you're going to go overboard on cashews so anyway that's very good, but I'm not ready to eat that just yet because I'm still snacking on my platter. Anyway, we're now going to get into a spinach subsy, basically just spinach fried Indian goodies. Um, so yeah, let's let's do it. Traditionally, this is obviously made with a ton of oil. We're not going to go there. We're going to go oil free as usual. If you guys see the mess that is this spice cupboard, I totally need to organise this but I have no idea how to because it's just too insane and I've honestly just got too many spices in there. It's ridiculous. Okay, so into this pan, we are gonna go in with half a teaspoon of cumin seeds, half a teaspoon of mixed mustard seeds in there as well. And we're just gonna put these on to dry fry until they start to smell really nice and fragrant and start to pop. Oh yes, I'm also gonna add in about um, like 10 little curry leaves into there to really get that flavor going. Okay, as you can see, we're starting to pop. So I've got half an onion diced up and then two little uh, frozen garlics. I'm just gonna whack that in with a little splash of water. And there we go, just gonna let that cook down for a little bit. Then we'll add in some other spices. Please let me know if you find it helpful actually looking at the pan that I'm cooking in. Um, I know I ob obviously don't really show the pan kind of portion of it. And I actually realised I actually like seeing other people's pans, kind of just seeing when things are done and what texture they should kind of be. So let me know if you like doing that and I can try and do that a bit more. Now this is another incredible way to make the veggies taste amazing. We are going to be using a lot of this spinach, probably over half the bag. So again, if you want to find a way of getting veggies into your life that taste delicious, this is how you do it, people. Okay, as this begins to cook down, I'm adding in a quarter teaspoon of turmeric. Then I've also got some mango powder, which really adds an extra, like, pizzazz. You don't have to have this, but this is a very special component as well. We want about half a teaspoon of the mango powder. Just give that a nice little mix, and we're gonna let these onions caramelize and really do their thing, adding little splashes of water as we go, as, we, as needed, really. Okay, we're starting to get really nice and caramelized here. Now, I don't want it to burn, so I'm just gonna add a little extra splash of water. There we go. And now we're gonna add our spinach. Okay. Once we've got the spinach in, we're just gonna whack the lid on for five minutes and let that cook down. 
I know we are making a lot of stuff today, guys. I apologize for the speed and the, um, the craziness of this video, but we're about to get started with some aloo paratha. I don't know why I'm bending down like this, but I've got two potatoes in the Instant Pot just steaming up, and I've got my whole wheat flour here. Now, I don't know if you guys, did I show you when I tried to make aloo paratha with um, oat flour? That did not go well because it really needs to be quite flexible in order to contain all the potato stuff in the middle. If you don't know what an aloo paratha is, it's basically like a roti bread, but it's got a potato filling stuffed inside it. So that is going to be interesting. Um, anyway, I'm going to use some whole wheat flour today in the hopes that this is a bit more flexy and gives me that kind of squidginess that I need. Okay, so I'm going to go in with one and a half cups of whole wheat flour. Okay, then I'm going to slowly add in about a cup of water whilst I'm mixing it because I don't want to add too much water, um, but I want it to be a really nice consistency. So we're going to go slow and then add as we need because you can't take water away, can you? Okay, so I've actually used about three quarters of a cup of water and that's feeling pretty nice. It's nice and squidgy. Uh, we definitely don't want any additional water in here. So, and then I'm going to let it rest, cover it, let it rest for about half an hour um, until the potato stuff is ready. So although I am boiling some potatoes, I've realised I've got loads of mash left over. So I'm just going to whack it in this pan, which had the spinach in it. This is the spinach. Look how tiny it's wilted down to. That is crazy. Um, yeah, anyway, so I'm just going to put some of this leftover mash into here. And we're just going to use this to be uh, our aloo paratha. I might just do all of it and then turn the rest of it into little balls and air fry it just for good measure. Okay, so this is our mashed potatoes, guys. I've just had a taste. Honestly, this takes mashed potatoes to the next level. Mm, next time you have mashed potatoes, I recommend making it like this. You can literally just eat a giant bowl of mashed potatoes with some veggies or something. That is delicious. Oh my God, the flavours in there. Why do we never think outside the box in terms of flavour? We just stick to the thing that we know and we never think outside the box when there's literally like a million different options of flavours that we could make to make things taste incredible. Blows my mind. Anywho, I've got half an hour, so let's try and roll out some uh, aloo paratha, shall we? Before I need to go and pick up the omelette. So what I saw people do is they roll it out into like a big sausage, like this. And then I'm actually just going to flour this surface so that it doesn't get completely stuck to the bottom and make a mess in the process. There is flour all over my wall now. Um, okay, then we're just gonna cut it into little chunkies. Let's do like that kind of sized chunkies. Oop, there we go. Okay, so roll this into a little ball. We're gonna flour both sides nicely, obviously. And then I'm just gonna try and like open it up um, and make like a little almost baby roti in here. Um, then this is where it gets tricky, guys. We're going to add some of our potato -y filling in the middle there. And then we're going to see if we can close this baby up because I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, guys. Let's see. Get in there, you little rascal. There we go. There we go. We're doing it. We are doing it. Okay, now this is not like the samosa. We're going to roll it back into a little ball with that creasy bit on the bottom, I think. Um, now we're going to be very, very gentle. We are going to lightly dust this baby, get our rolling pin out, and try not to make its insides completely explode. Oh my God, I'm feeling so nervous. Oh my God, why am I doing this to myself? Ha! Ah! Oh no! Confidence, confidence. You guys are like my, um, my silent, hopefully, cheerleaders. And you're like, come on, Amy, you can do it. Don't mess it up. Okay, that does not look too bad. Look at that. We've got the potato on the inside, but it's not looking too bad. Okay, let's cook this bad boy up, shall we? And boom, okay, there we go. Okay, we can see it starts to change color a little bit. We're gonna flip it over. Oh yes, this is working, people, woohoo! Okay, now that's looking really good. So we're gonna take it off the heat. And this is our little aloo paratha. Oh yes, okay. Can you say num num? Num num. Num num. Num num. Come here. Can you do like this? Ah, uh, num num. 
Rami is back at home and she has not had a sleep. She's knackered, she wants a feed, but I'm getting a bit hungry, so I'm gonna to put together a very, very quick and simple lunch. I've got leftover green beans from yesterday. I also have some potatoes that I just steamed up in my Instant Pot earlier. I'm wanting to keep today's lunch very simple and basic because the rest of the day has been pretty fancy, to be honest. These are my leftover green beans from yesterday. I did end up having um, a full bowl of green beans. Right, there we go. And then I want something a little bit more exciting on here. So what I'm gonna do, Rami has truly, truly lost the plot, I think. Ramla, are you all right there, babes? Yeah. Oh, all right then. <laughs> I thought I could add here um, an apple sliced up with some of my oil-free hummus because if you guys haven't tried apple and hummus, it's a winner. Oh, wrong it. Hold on a second, scratch that, scratch that. We're taking off these potatoes and we're putting on some sweet potatoes. I'm gonna whack these in the microwave. Super, super simple. This is probably the kind of lunch I would eat most days if I wasn't uh, getting creative in the kitchen, to be honest. There we go. And then just some nice oil-free hummus on the side. Perfect combination. You've got some fruit, you've got your veggies, you've got a very noisy baby, sweet potatoes and legumes. So really that hit, hits all the spots. Anyway, I'm gonna go and enjoy this whilst I feed Roms with a massive bottle of water as well. You breastfeeding mums know you need some water when you sit down and feed. Anyway, um, I'll talk to you later. Back home, back from the school run, and I wanted to show you some aloe for us. This one's already half fallen apart, actually, but it's because I uh, I rolled it badly. But I thought we could have a little taste and see what it's like. That is delicious. Anyway, um, I need to take some photos, and then I'm gonna get started with dinner. It's not good as your mango. No. Abe's got a mango. And to be fair, Abe, mangoes are the best. You're absolutely right. Tonight we're going to make some butter tofu to have with our spinach subsea and our aloe paratha. So that should be delicious. It's time to make some dinner. We're going to do some healthy butter tofu. It's very, very simple. What we're going to do is we're just going to saute onion, garlic and ginger in um, a pan with some water for a few minutes and then we're gonna add some other bits as well. I was thinking about what vegetable element to do for this evening. I've obviously got some spinach, but it is a very, very tiny amount of spinach. So I was thinking, do you remember those um, broccoli pakoras I did the other day? I was gonna do some cauliflower versions and I've got my frozen bag of cauliflower. So I'm gonna defrost this in the microwave real quick and then I'm gonna put all the same battery stuff on it um, and then just whack it in the air fryer and see what happens. That's my plan. So for the tofu part of the butter tofu, basically what I'm doing is I've got a little bit of leftover yogurt in here. I've added cumin, coriander, garam masala, some black salt and some lemon juice, mixing that all up. And then I'm just gonna marinate some tofu in there and then I'm gonna stick it in the air fryer. Um, and then that can get nice and crispy and kind of do its own thing. And then I'm gonna add that into the saucy stuff at the very end. Oh, well I reckon. Okay, I'm gonna this lovely mix. Okay, so into this oniony, garlicky, gingery mix, I put two tins of tomatoes, loads of squeezy tomato, and I put a little handful of cashews as well to give it a bit of creaminess. Um, and then I'm just gonna let this saute down for a little bit. I've just realized that frozen cauliflower is perfect for turning into a pakora, because you don't have to add any liquid. So I've just defrosted the cauliflower, and I just put in all of the spices and some chickpea flour, and it's literally coated automatically without any water. So frozen cauliflower is where it's at. I am going to be making this on a regular basis. You can obviously probably mix up the cuisine and you could do like Japanese style or just whatever you fancy. Anyway, um, I went light on the chickpea flour because I'm wanting this to be more of a vegetable element, of course. Um, I'm just gonna spread this out and whack it in the oven for probably like 30 to 40 minutes until it's really nice and crispy. But yeah, a very, very nice, tasty way to get in some lovely veggies. 
Okay, into this lovely tomato we mix, I have added a little bit of this leftover mashed potato and a splash of like a drinkable coconut milk, not like the thick tins of coconut milk. Um, and I thought that would just add a nice extra creaminess. I really did a very small handful of cashews in here. Um, okay, so let's just blend this up and see what we're working with. Oh God, it's gonna go everywhere. So if anyone wants to see what my babies are having, they are having, they're not having butter tofu, they are actually having spinach tofu because I had spinach left over and they really love this stuff. Um, it's basically spinach and cashews and loads of herbs uh, and loads of spices, sorry, blended together with some tofu in there. And I paired it with some oranges and some avocado and a little bit of the spinach subsy that I made earlier. Okay, sorry about the noisy kitchen. This is the lovely crisped up yogurty tofu. It is very, very tasty. Mm. I'm just gonna whack this into the into the sauce. You obviously don't have to do that to the tofu. You can just put it in plain. I just did that for like an extra bit of fun, crunchy, tasty goodness. Ah, you missed it. You missed it. Oh, mm. oh yeah. Is it good? Yeah. It's worth it, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Okay. There we go. Then just mix it in, and that is our butter tofu. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yum. Holy Jesus, this kitchen is a mess. Um, I wanted to add lots of freshness to this evening because I'm feeling quite hungry and I know I wanted that box. So I've done a massive medley salad. Um, I've got apple, beetroot, um, cucumber, tomato, lettuce, and then I've just done cumin, coriander, chat masala, lemon juice, um, and some black salt. So that is the salad portion. Today is all about vegetables. This, these little cauliflower nuggets are incredible, guys. If you think cauliflower is boring, think again. Holy muffins. Right, we're going in with all of this because I'm so excited to eat it. And then of course, butter tofu. There we go. Let's not forget the spinach subsidy that we had from earlier today that also needs to be eaten. So there we go. I hope you guys can appreciate how vegetable heavy this meal actually is. It is going to be so delicious, so satisfying, and it's basically all vegetables and that blows my mind. It is so low calorie density. Yes, guys, yes. You've got to start making stuff like this because it'll change the way that you feel about healthy eating. Mm. Anyway, I'm going to go and eat this with everybody. We're going to have family movie night tonight because it's Friday. Um, and then, yeah, chat to you guys later.